solar panels just got a thousand times better. Wait on, that doesn't make sense, does it? A recently published article in the Science Journal Family has made this claim. If true, this breakthrough might completely change how we make solar panels in the future. But there must be more to this. So let's discuss it. If you saw some of these articles, you might be under the impression that solar panels have somehow become a thousand times better. But commercial solar panels typically have an efficiency of around 20 to 30%. So a thousand times more efficient doesn't make sense. And that is because that is not what the scientists meant. It is a thousand times better than when compared to a specific type of solar panel that is not very good when compared to standard silicon panels. But this being said, you should still be excited because this is still a very interesting result that might have significant impact on solar panels in the future. So why do I say this? It comes down to the concept of a solar panel design and the methodology of making it. Solar panels work by converting sunlight into electrical energy. They are made up of photovoltaic or PV cells, which are typically made of silicon and can absorb light. When sunlight hits PV cells, it knocks electrons loose from their atoms, creating a flow of electricity. But for these electrons to be useful, there needs to be an electrical potential across the PV cell, otherwise the electrons don't contribute to a current. This can be produced by applying a voltage to the cell, but it's not very practical. So instead, we design them to have inbuilt intrinsic electric fields. In silicon, we do this by doping silicon with other atoms. Basically, we smash some additional atoms in there that have less or more electrons to make what is called a positive, negative, or PN junction. In this new research, they use a different type of material that has this quality by its very nature, which may make this type of solar panel significantly easier to produce in the long run. It is called a ferroelectric material, and it has an inbuilt electric field. In this case, they produced a layered material where they interleaved a single layer of one material with another over and over again. The different materials are all very similar. In fact, there's only a single atomic species that's different between all three. Strontium titanate, barium titanate, and calcium titanate. However, this makes significant differences to the materials in many ways. But here, one key component is the atom spacing. You could imagine that all of the oxygen atoms would line up in these materials, but this is not the case in their natural form. The oxygen atoms have different positions, but when they are layered on top of each other, their interactions between the layers tug and pull the other atoms until all of the oxygen atoms do line up. This pulls and pushes some of the atoms around, straining the lattice, which in turn significantly improves the performance of these materials as a PV because it enhances the inbuilt electric field. Now we already knew this about some of these materials. Previously, another group had measured this by directly applying pressure to the materials using an atomic force microscope. This type of pressure application is simply not practical for devices, but it is a great way to study systems to begin with. This is a great demonstration of how high pressure studies can find something out and then we can try to engineer this environment under normal lab conditions. This is already super exciting because we are at the point where we can engineer qualities in materials by making clever choices on how we make them on an atomic scale. Another key important component is how the material is made. To produce this material, they heated crystals using a high powered laser. While this is not as mature as techniques like most silicon manufacturing, it does have some benefits which may make it the manufacturing of solar panels with this design cheaper. We are still well off seeing this design coming to a commercial market. So much more improvements may occur over the coming years. It may even surpass current silicon designs. While this is a very promising result, not all advances in science are so straightforward. Check out this video where I discuss recent claims about room temperature superconductors where some scientists aren't convinced that the researchers didn't just make up the results.